the seat here. Hey, Calvin. Hey, Pauline. How are you? Hi, Dr. G. Is your crisis abated, I hope? Um, kind of. I'll, I'll turn on my video in a second. I just need to do something. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. I don't mean to pressure you or anything. I just, you know, I really, it really is nice sure. to see you. <laughs> I've got to turn on my video here, too. There I am. So is this evening sun coming in on my left side. Hey, Pauline, how are you? Ah, can't hear you. I'm going to unmute you. I can't unmute you. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. I forgot. I was oh, muted. No, that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> oh, goodness. I'm eating. <laughs> yeah, that's totally fine. That's so I was eating yesterday. It's fine. Well, Dr. Terrell, so yes. uh, on Tuesday, my I had to take my dog to the pet hospital, and so I was oh. dealing with that. And that was why I was like, I'm not really here. <laughs> oh, I got it. I got it. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. I understand. Is your is he better now or? Um, she had surgery, so it's going to be a couple weeks. Surgery? Oh, my God. What? Oh, may I ask what was wrong with the little critter? Um, so she accidentally got pregnant, and then she oh. couldn't have the babies. Mm -hmm. Like She was having difficult having the babies, and none of them mm. survived. And, oh. oh, poor doggy. Oh, yikes. Yeah. Uh, mm. well. <sighs> yeah, so I was dealing like with the emotional stuff, with the paperwork stuff, with <laughs> I know, financial stuff, right? Mm hmm Jeez. That's a lot to deal with. Hmm. Which is why I was like, Dr. T, like, don't <laughs> Don't harass you. I know. It's almost impossible to get me to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, is that oh, okay? That works. So I'm at the park right now. Mm -hmm. I'm at the park and eating. Oh. So how are you, Doctor T? I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. Just uh, uh, trying to figure out how to how to get sort of get moving with this class right now because I couldn't I, I couldn't really tell what happened last time. Um, <laughs> uh, Doctor T, I hate to break it to you, but you're teaching this class. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. It's pathetic, but, um, but uh, let's see. So anyway, I'm uh, I'm planning on sort of summarizing it today, and then and then we'll move into the smiles paper, et cetera. We're um, and I've got I've got a good set of questions for you. And uh, what I'm gonna swap out these screens.
Oh. There she is. Now Calvin's offline here. And it looks like you're the only two who are going to show up. So that's good. <laughs> Oops, I popped onto the wrong screen here. Ah, no, Dan is here. Oops, why do you keep popping down here? Calvin, Dan. Hey, Dan. Hey. How's it going? Good. Good. Got you and Pauline. Pauline's out in the park having dinner. Calvin is, where is Calvin? I don't know where Calvin is. Um, got two minutes till we start in earnest. Oh, you know what? I need to do the, the, uh, sh the chat. Ah, we got Kai and Ivy coming on there. There we go. It's a group chat that's coming. Hello. Hello, Kenya, Aditya, Leslie, Calvin, Kai, Ivy. Colleen, Roger, Dan. I just said hello to myself. Does that make me crazy? Okay, Richard is here. Oh, no, Richard's gone. Now he's back. Now he's gone. Wait. Lily is here. Hi. Hello, Lily. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I looked up the um I looked up the uh chinchilla takes a sand bath. Was that um, your suggestion or was that? No, uh, that was someone else, but it's so that, cute. That, that was Ivy, right? Yes, that was me. Ah, that's right, that's right. Yeah, it was, you know, it was cute. They're like little rats or something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I, you know, I don't know, it was, it was all right. I don't think it's gonna, I wouldn't go crazy for it though. They're like three quarters fur. Oh. Which is why That's... they need the sand bath. They live in a really cold climate. And so oh. if they used a water bath, they would, uh, the water would, would freeze in their fur and it's so thick that they'd basically freeze. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I get it, I get it. <laughs> huh, well see now I am, I am better educated for having been a jerk and criticized <laughs> your chinchilla suggestion. <laughs> Ivy's chinchilla suggestion. Ivy's chinchilla suggestion. Oh my gosh. Okay, so where is my smallest Okay, so I'm gonna do something a little bit different today. Whoops, no, that's not right. Uh, Okay, so um, I think we're all present on the count of four here. So uh, let's get started. Um, so we got through last time uh, uh, kind of a long-winded discussion of like what a quantum state is, you know. But I just wanted to, I, I, I kind of left us hanging right at the end, which is like, you know, when you have, um, if you have this type of situation where you have S0, S1, S2 levels, right? Don't, uh, you can ignore the fact that this is... We can't see. Yeah, we're not. Oh. You're not oh, so the sorry, sorry. camera. Okay. Ah, here we go. Ah, there we go. Now you guys are up there too. So now you should be able to see a, a Word document with a bunch of lines. Excellent. Cool. Richard, you look like a zebra. <laughs> it's <season one. laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's totally, it's totally cool. I appreciate it. 
I, I know I look like sort of like a Janus figure, you know, like, like light side and a dark side. Uh, but um, let's see here. So, um, so the point from last conversation, right, was that this state here is really a set of uh, vibrational, rotational, and electronic quantum numbers, right? And when you change state, let's say you put a photon in whose energy corresponds to the difference in energy between these two states, you're going to go from, you know, S0, V0, J5 to S1, V3, you know, J7 or whatever, you know. And there's going to be, there's a whole bunch of different quantum numbers, but uh, really there's just one electron plus the vibration. And the vibrations can be complex. You know? A lot of different vibrations can be involved. And then, uh, and then rotations. You know, and we're going to ignore rotations. And we're going to ignore vibrations because uh, they only contribute to the width of the bands that we can observe in condensed phase spectrum, right? So it's like, why did I go to all this trouble to emphasize that? I don't know. I'm crazy. But um, so now um, I have over here on the right hand side a, uh, a description of lambda and nu bar, right? I just made a table in Excel and pasted it in here, right? And um, 200 nanometers is 50,000 wave numbers, 250 is 40,000. 400 is 25,000, you know, you go up to a thousand nanometers, and that's 10,000 wave numbers, right? Now, if we keep going this way, and we get to zero, what happens to the uh, value of lambda? And let me put this equation. E equals H C over lambda. So these are photon energies, right? So if if the energy goes to zero, what is that implying about lambda? H and C being constants. Goes to infinity. Exactly right. So down here, you know. Uh, actually, the top of this vibrational manifold, this is probably maybe um, maybe uh, 3,000 wave numbers. The bottom of it might be, you know, um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, shoot. What just happened there? Um, uh, 3,000 nanometers. I'm sorry, uh, it's gonna be 3,000 wave numbers. And maybe down to 250 or so, maybe 500. Down here, you know. And the energy can go down to zero, right? The wave numbers can go to zero. But we can't, we can't ever observe that, you know, that's, um, where did you guys go? I minimized everything. I touched something on the stupid screen and minimized everything. So. Ah, there we are. I still can't see Calvin or Kai or Ivy or DJ or Leslie or Lily or He Kun. And it pains me. Ah, there's a DJ. Hi, DJ. Hi, Kun. Oh my gosh. Calvin is still, he's, he's probably out of the bathroom. Kai is hoping I forget. Ivy is determined that I forget. And Leslie and Lily are hiding as well. So, um, so the energy can go to zero, right? It's kind of, 
energy, I like that scale, right? But you can't obviously have a, a zero energy photon or a very low energy photon, say one wave numbers, that'll have an extremely long wavelength that we can't measure using optical. But, um, you know, uh, this is probably going to be around uh, 3,000 uh, nanometers. And then this is going to be um, 25,000. And then as we get down towards here, that, that value goes to infinity, right? Is that everybody sort of tracking with that? So um, now, uh, so let's talk about excitation spectra in this context. Right? Um, in an excitation spectrum, we explore the absorptions that produce emissions at a particular longer wavelength. The particular longer wavelength is, has to do with this This is the, let's say it's the red uh, wavelength of the emission. And I, I show it here going from S1V0 to S0V1. This is like S1V0, and this is S0V1, right? right here. And I say that because that, that may not be the most intense emission, but it, it's probably going to be strong enough to observe conveniently um, in any um, uh, in any of these cases, right? So um, now uh, let's look at the length of this line on this scale over here. Let's say, well, maybe this line is 10,000 wave numbers in length. Ten thousand wave numbers is um, is one thousand nanometers. Right. Actually, it's probably more like it's probably more like twenty thousand long, right? Because if we take this distance here, that's roughly that maybe twenty, maybe thirty thousand. This could be 30,000 wave numbers, right? So this is, this is, um, that's actually a little bit too long. Let's say that this guy is um, 20,000 wave numbers long. Right? And the, the length, I can move up and down. I can, I can move the link up and down here and it'll always apply, right? The distance between energy states in wave numbers is just a difference in energy, right? Lambda is not linear with wavelength. It is not linear with energy, right? So, so I can do this. I can say that this arrow is 20,000 wave numbers long. Even though it doesn't end at the ground state, the photon that corresponds to this guy, oops, oh, the photon that corresponds to this guy is 500 nanometers, right? Python, hello, Python. Go away, Python. I don't know how to use Python. I know that I think about it. I just tried one time and got totally bored of it. But... So, um, so, so in, a, in an excitation spectrum, we're going to set our emission monochromator to what wavelength? Okay. 
could you repeat the question? You kind of cut off at the beginning. Okay. What wavelength are we going to set it to? To do this emission, to do this excitation spectrum. Five fifty or six hundred or. Well, yeah, we're going to set it to this to detect these photons right here. So we're going to set it to what nanometers? You were very close. Yeah, 500. 500, exactly. 500 nanometers, right? So basically, we're, we're, irradiating, we're irradiating this cuvette. We've got, a, we've got a cuvette here. And uh, we're irradiating it with um, range of excitation uh, wavelengths are coming in, right? And then what's coming out, we're only looking at at what wavelength? Uh, Pauline. Oh, she, as soon as I asked, she disappeared. She's like, boom, I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm sneaky. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out how to use the mobile version of this while doing video. <laughs> You're doing good, man. You're doing good. It's amazing how powerful phones are. It's just amazing. Okay, what, what wavelength, so this is from the excitation monochromator, and this is going to the EM monochromator, right? And we've set the EM monochromator to 500 nanometers, therefore we are only looking at 500, you know, plus or minus five nanometers, something like that, right? Yep. Yes. Excellent. Cool. So, um, uh, so this this what we're describing right now is an excitation or an emission scan. Richard. If we fix the emission monochromator, this is a blank scan, emission or excitation. No, 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 don't look, don't look. Don't look. We fix the emission, therefore it is a blank scan. Excitation. Exactly. Excitation. Excitation scan. Exactly. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Good. So, so we're doing an excitation scan, and we're only going to look at this one wavelength coming out. Okay. So, now, uh, to do this excitation scan, we're going to start. Uh, let's 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 start at high at at uh, long wavelengths and scan to shorter wavelengths. Okay, so I'm going to start here with one thousand nanometers lambda ex. Right? So the black lines are. the excitation and 
And the red line is the emission. Okay. So if we start at 1000 nanometers going in, will we see a 500 nanometer emission emitted light at 1000 nanometers in? No. Okay, who said that? Adam. Adam. Ah, Adam, right. Adam, you're correct, why? It's not enough energy to excite into the S1. Uh, that is very, very true. That is very, very true. There's not enough energy to even get you there, okay? So, um, what if we then keep scanning and keep scanning, and we get to S1? Is it possible then that we will see 500 nanometer uh, light coming out. Sorry. Thank you for turning on your webcam, Carla. What did you say my name? It cut out a little bit. Oh, I did. It's, I've been talking to you for 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely didn't cut out that long. <laughs> no, 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 I'm just kidding. So, um, uh, so if we excite from S0 to S1, right? Let's say that this is uh, maybe 400 nanometers or something. This is, uh, 50, um, I don't know. Let's say it's, it's just enough to get there, right? Is it possible then that we will observe this red emission coming out? Is it just, is it possible, right? So we're starting at this state and we're creating this state, right? There, there's, there is an optically connected state between here and here. That's why we write the lines. You know, that's really why. You know, in theory, it's a different quantum state, right? But that's all theory. What really we observe is that when we do optical excitation, that's when light Yeah, so we can see light coming out when we get to this energy, right? Then, then we'll see a bump there. We'll start to see, we'll plot this wavelength, right? And then we'll make a little graph indicating that light has come out, okay? That's, that's how we kind of start this emission scan, right? Okay, then we scan some more. Now we're right in between these. Now, let's assume for the moment that this is gas phase, right? That there's no broadening of the lines. They're very sharp and there's no rotation. Will we observe, if we're gas phase, will we observe emission at this 500 nanometer emission wavelength when we were putting in this intermediate frequency of photon in there. Yes. You cut out again when you said the name, so we didn't hear. Oh, Kenya. Sorry, I said Kenya. What is wrong with this? I've got a, I've got a thing here and everything and, ah, I should be loud and clear. Just to clarify, you're talking about the energy hasn't quite reached the first vibrational state? And right, uh, that right, happen? right. It's intermediate. It's between S1V0 and S1V1. Or V prime or double prime, whatever. It's a second vibrational level. The vibrational level associated with the second electronic state. Yeah. Do we see do we see light coming out there? Kenya. I'm gonna say no. You are correct. Yeah, 50-50 chance. You got it. Which is about a 17 times 
unfavored answer. <laughs> because normally, when I ask my students, and I give them a 50-50 chance, they get it wrong. <laughs> it's almost always. Okay, so does that make sense, right? Why we don't see, if we're in the gas phase, and we're in between states here, we don't see any emission, right? Because there's no state, there's nothing to transition into. I have a question, Dr. Tao. Yes. Um, wouldn't it just go back down to the S1 V0 and then- So, so okay, so what, the fact that I've written an arrow here does not mean that that photon was absorbed, right? I see. It, it doesn't mean that it was absorbed. It's just like, that's what it was exposed to. So if there's no line, if there's no horizontal line corresponding to that vertical arrow, then there's no absorption, no interaction, right? Excellent, good. We're starting to get on the same page here. Sorta, ah, okay, we're getting there, trust me. So now, um, now in the condensed phase, you know, we're scanning up here, and we start to see a peak in the condensed phase. This peak is continuous because of what phenomenon? And that would be solvent interactions, broadening. Uh, 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 there's, you know. Ensemble averaging or solvent interaction would be good answers to that. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So, um, so now let's say now we're scanning and we go into this range. Is there emission when this when the excitation monochromator is set to that gap? You could. No. Exactly right. Because there's no there's no way for this molecule to absorb this frequency of light. It's transparent at that frequency. The light just goes through, does not interact. Yeah. Make a sense? It all starts to fit together. Trust me. Okay? So um so the reason that I wrote all these to the right here was that I was trying to make a point that, that as you scan, you have these various you know, interactions, right? Where you get no, no absorption and no e emission. And you get absorption and emission, then no absorption, no emission, then absorption and emission. And then, I, you know, basically it's sometimes when the energies get really high, uh, it's, it's actually the states become more congested. Have you ever seen the, the typical, um, typically as you get higher energies as more states, right? So a lot of times as you go to the ultraviolet, you, uh, uh, you always see emission, right? So I don't know what to say here, but you know, probably let's just say for the sake of argument, if there really is no no state there, this would be no absorption, no emission, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. Are we good. Excellent. Cool. <clears throat> so um, Kai, how are you doing? Are you there? Or did you sign on and go to Jack in the Box? I'm here. Okay, cool. Does this make sense? So you said there's a, no place where there would be no admission and no. So at 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 this way, if you put in 
this energy of a photon, there's no absorption and no emission. If you put in this energy of a photon, there is absorption and there is emission, mm. right? Then you put in this energy, there's no absorption, no emission. This energy, there's absorption, emission. You go above it, there's no absorption, no emission. Even oh. though in reality, things get more congested than that. Okay. okay. So, uh, hmm. So let us see then uh, what would a spectrum of this molecule look like? We're going to say lambda EX, and this is going to be EM at 500 nanometers. So Let's go to from 200 to 490 nanometers. So um, at uh, uh, at 490 nanometers, Wouldn't you want to go a little higher on the nanometers? 490 would be too low. Well, the thing is that lambda e, EM is 500, right? So in general, you don't want to, to you don't expect anti-Stokes phenomena, right? And if you scan over, well, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do it. We can do whatever we want here. Oops. We can go do whatever we want here. We can go to say a thousand nanometers. And so um, let's say, just for the sake of argument, that we want to start at low energy excitations. Low energy excitations would be starting at 200 or a thousand nanometers volume. So which is higher energy, 200 or 1,000 nanometers? If E equals HC over lambda. Two hundred. Right. OK. So um, if lambda EX, if we want to start at low energies, we're going to start at which end, 200 or 1,000? Did you say start at low energies? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to start either going this way or going this way. So wouldn't low energy be 1,000? Right, exactly. So if we're, if we're putting in 1,000 wave numbers, how much emission are we getting out at 500? Richard? If we've got 1,000 wave numbers, 1,000 nanometers going in, how much have we? How much is coming out at five hundred? A lot, a little, or none? Uh, none. None. Exactly. Very good. So this continues on, and we don't see anything because, in general, our samples at room temperature. And it's not emitting, it's not emitting energy, right? It's a microwave photon, just chicken shit stuff, right? Nothing in the optical frequency range, right? It's not glowing, right? It's not white hot, right? So when we, oops, when we get to 500, we see a bump. What does that bump do to? Someone who's had 155, like Kenya. If you're, if you're put in 500 and you're looking at 500, what are you going to see? 
Starts with an S. And it's named after an English lord. And also a bicycle. Even though none of you have heard of Raleigh, Raleigh bicycles. What? I said I remember writing this down, but yeah. I don't. So you see Rayleigh scattering, right? Oh yeah, that guy. Yeah. Rayleigh scattering. So is Rayleigh scattering elastic or inelastic? Uh, I think it's inelastic. Exactly wrong. It's elastic. Oh, okay. Aha, I told you. Just count them up. The number of 50% chances are for you guys is going to be like 10%. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kenya. I just pick on you relentlessly. It's okay. Is, I do not know what is wrong with me. But K-12 uh, prepared me for this. Oh, really? No kidding. <laughs> okay, so maybe I should go back into the sixth grade. So Rayleigh is elastic, right? That means that there's no energy loss. It's like a rubber ball that bounces, boing, and comes back to the same level, right? That's what elastic means. It means it returns the energy to the point. Right? So this is a Rayleigh scattering peak. You know? And it also could be resonance fluorescence. It's just really unlikely, you know? Just really unlikely, right? And in this case, as we get below then, we're gonna see a set of peaks here, and we're gonna see a set of peaks here, right? Now, to what do these peaks correspond? Absorptions into this manifold or absorptions into this manifold? Call it S1 or S2. Okay, it's another 50% chance you guys got here. 50 50. Who's going to go out on a limb? Wait, you guys can elect someone. You guys can elect. Oh, you're back. You're back, Kai. I love it. Or we can all post in the chat. No, Adam said S1. Here, here, he's the tribute. Adam said S1? Uh, do we want to go with S1? Richard, do you want to go with S1? I do. I trust Adam. It's S1. Oh, you trust Adam? <laughs> <laughs> this this is what it's based on? The great Adam has spoken. <laughs> Adam, what is your opinion? Virtual in the middle, Calvin. No, it's not in the middle. Sorry, I just woke up. You you fell asleep? Yeah. Oh my god. At least he's on. Oh it. man, I have to change. I should be in like the sleep number business or something. Just call me up and I'll start lecturing and boom, you'll be out. Be like, oh. Because I was like, why am I hearing Dr. T? I was like, oh, I forgot I have a class today. So you woke me up. <laughs> no, you were signed on 20 minutes early. <laughs> How does this happen? I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't even keep you guys awake. <laughs> the load teach you anything. It's hopeless, Carla. It's hopeless. So is that S1? Well, so let's see here. It's between 500 and 200. Let's say it's 350 nanometers, right? Uh, 350 nanometers, about 30,000 wave numbers. about this long, right? That's about 30,000 wave numbers long. So that's about this long, right? So that would be into state S1 or S2. Tell me. 
S1. Adam. S1. Son, tell me. I vote S1 also. S1, exactly. This is S1. Okay, we're bucking the trends here. Therefore, this one is into state. S2. S2. Only goes like this. Surprised she doesn't go like this. No, it's like that, right? You want to be like a gang sign or something? Why would I be doing that? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm a total dweeb. I do not know. I do not know. I am what the surfers would describe as a kook. What uh, everyone else would describe as a dweeb or a nerd. Anyway, <laughs> so um, so there we go. We got S one and S two, right? And then we run out of spectral range, right? We can't really go beyond two hundred with a normal spectrometer. We just can't do it because oxygen absorbs, silica absorbs, everything absorbs, nitrogen absorbs, you know, water absorbs. It's just a big mass. So that's where our limit is. Does that make sense? So this is uh, this here where we plot emission versus excitation wavelength is E blank spectrum. EX or EM? And yeah. Don't worry, Calvin. I fell asleep in 155. <laughs> it was at 7.30 in the morning. I know. Plus, I was putting you to sleep, right? How Don't can worry. you resist? How can you resist? What was oh, your God. question? I forgot my question. This spectrum, is this an EX or an EM? 50% chance. What does EX stand for? And what does EM stand for? Excitation and Excitation emission. emission. Yes. Yes. Is this an excitation spectrum or an emission spectrum? It's an excitation spectrum. Yes. EX. Remember we started talking about excitation spectrum. Okay. So an excitation spectrum looks a lot like an absorption spectrum. Right? Right? This? Because whenever you can couple light in, it's likely that it's going to come out there if the molecule is fluorescent, right? So if we're talking about this excitation wavelength here, right? We're getting down to say 250 nanometers, right? What happens to the molecule after we put it into this state here, S2V1? What, what physical processes happen to the molecule Richard, what happens? Non-radiation decay. Exactly! Oh my god! That was perfect! That wasn't even 50-50. This was like one in a million. He's studying. You guys take notes. He studies. He reads a chapter. He reads a book. He does the homework. Who else did the homework? There's a Dr. Book, T, we, ha there's we a have book? a book? <laughs> a book. Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a chapter. There's a chapter on, on Canvas. There's a chapter on oh. Canvas. There's a oh. chapter. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I mentioned it last time. And then I surreptitiously wrote on Canvas that when I said there was a good read, I meant read it. 
and Richard got the hint and he read it. So good for Richard. Anyway, so there is um uh so there's non-radiative decay, which is the first one. It's gonna be a downward arrow starting here, and it's gonna end where? going to be woogly woogly and it's going to stop right there. Okay. Because everybody takes a rest once they shed their vibrational energy, they rest at the next electronic state, right? The vibrational energy uh, relaxation happens in picoseconds then the electronic states last for nanoseconds. Pico is 15, oh, Pico is 12, nano is nine, right? So this happens in a picosecond. And then this waits for a nanosecond. Now this can internally convert. This is IC, internal conversion. That's where it gives off this energy somehow. Nobody knows how. Don't ask. It just happens, okay? Don't be cheeky. You're very cheeky because you want to know, don't you? Well, get a PhD and figure it out. <laughs> right? And then it goes boom. It actually does boom, 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 and boom, right? It comes down at all these different wavelengths, right? But we only monitor one, so we only see this one. That's the only one we see, is that one wavelength, right? Because that's where, that's where we have the emission monochromator set, right? Does that make sense? Okay, so um, that, that's it. You've answered all the questions. Everything's good. Uh, no need to murder me over the internet. I see. Um, I see everybody's got knife icons on their screen. There's like Dan actually even has a knife icon. Well. It's like a knife. It shows up in the lower right hand corner. Boom, boom, boom. That's when you guys are so annoyed with me that you want to kill me. <laughs> but I don't think you can do it from your computer. You can try. Right, Carla? You can try. Just like punch in a code and my computer explodes and you're done with me. Okay. Oh, so I'm even annoying now. Okay, so let's see here now. Um, now let's talk about an emission spectrum, right? For an emission spectrum, we fix the excitation monochromator and explore the spectrum of light that is emitted, right? Now, this could get interesting, right? Because state S0, S1, and S2, you have to ask the question, does S2 emit light? Does it emit light directly? If S2 emits light, we're gonna be talking about starting in, in the state here, the arrow's going to go up or down. He can't tell. Time. Up or down. Down. Thank you, Kenya. You rest. He couldn't. You owe Kenya a rescue. Oh, so I, got didn't, a, you, I didn't. I didn't hear my name. Sorry. <laughs> oh, you didn't even hear your name? Yeah. Like, is my audio that bad? I've got this I think it's the audio. Just you cut out sometimes from like the internet. I think. 
Dr. Terrell, do you have Xfinity? It's been really unstable today. I do not have Xfinity. Well, then I've I don't got, know. I've got AT&T Fiber. You better call and complain. Conveniently, you cut out when you I'm sure it. they're going to come right away and like mess with my router. And they're going to blow them. They're going to make it into a 19-hour hole. We have to listen to elevator music for 24 hours straight. Then I'm going to use a curse word. When they come on, they're going to call the cops on me. That's the way that works. What? A curse word. That was my son. I don't know what got him out of his room. Anyway, so if S2 is radiated, right? then we're gonna see something associated with a downward arrow here. And the question is, will it skip S1 or not, right? If, if, if S2 is radiated, we'll see a series of emissions like this, right? If S2 is not radiated, it's just going to hang out in S2. It's going to internally convert into S1. You know, it's going to go into any of these states internally convert. Then it will hang out here, and then it will emit going that way, right? We already know this is operative because we did the um, excitation scan. Right? We know that there's this emission band there, right? I don't know. We did experiments, right? Okay. So, um, so the uh, red line is the fixed EX monochromator, and the black lines are the um, Variable EM monochromator. Right? So, so what would this guy look like? Intensity versus lambda EM. So it's 200 to 1000. So what do we know about 500 nanometers? Is, is there an emission band at 500 nanometers for this molecule? Um, no. Wait. Had a 50-50 chance, man. Well, last time, didn't you switch it from 500 to 350? Yeah, when you went from the S1 to the ground state. But that was... Okay. No, it was, it so, was emitting 500, but... Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so 500 is... Actually, 500 is this guy, right? Right, because then when we, when we fix the emission monochromator here, oops, here, this is this guy here was twenty thousand wave numbers five hundred nanometers. Right, you remember now? Good, excellent. So there is emission of five hundred, right? So as we're scanning the emission monochromator here. We're starting, we're looking at longer and longer wavelengths. You know, and I can't really draw upward arrows here because that's not what's happening. Right? When we're looking at emission, right? Emission is all downward arrows, right? 
So these guys are say from uh, 750 to uh, so 450 nanometers, right? I don't know, something like that, right? So it's, okay. Something like that, right? Then what's next? What, what do we happen upon next? Okay, so um, uh, I have a question for you. And, and um, it's gonna sound a little bit like mean and insulting, but I'm a mean and insulting person. So my question for you is, Am I opaque or do you not care? Or both? <laughs> okay, let's vote. Let's vote on the chat. Opaque yeah, or what? Talking, yeah, what opaque or don't care. Let's see. Are we talking about the light being emitted or you? No, me. me, me. Oh, you're talking about physically, not like your point is opaque? <laughs> okay. All right. I think I get it. I'm very confused about the question. I am also confused. I second that. I'm third. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, okay. So, so, so we're scanning. What a we're... <laughs> What's a dookie? I don't I'm know. not even, I'm not even going to answer that question. You just want me to say poop. Formal definition, please. The formal definition. <laughs> she didn't know what that was. Come on. I it wasn't in the vocab. <laughs> Thank you, Calvin. <laughs> oh, my God. See, this is where I have to go to get you guys engaged, right? Calvin has finally turned on. He finally woke up because he got to write S blank blank T. <laughs> Okay, so if I'm if I'm scanning here, like I'm scanning from a thousand, right? Then I get to these peaks here, right? And I keep scanning. Then what happens? Right? That's what my question is. Right. So I'm scanning. I get these peaks, and I keep scanning. Is there just instantly more peaks and more peaks like that? No, because of the way I asked it, you should know that the question, the answer is no, right? Okay, so now you know the answer to the rest of the question, which is, what happens here? You should see another peak for the S2. You see more peaks, right? Peak or peaks, right? Depending yeah, on so how, how is it possible you... that they average out to just one peak? Yeah, it's very possible. So in water, in water as a solvent, oftentimes, okay, yeah, yeah. So it's a combination of my stupid audio cutting off and like letting you guys catch up, right? Okay, I got it, I got it, right? So, um, so uh, in water, a lot of times, all of these peaks will collapse into one, right? And everybody can be hating on Dan now because he got me on a tangent and I'm not going to let go. We were talking about opaque skin. What about, what, you didn't answer that one. I want to know. No, no. I, I am opaque and you don't give a dookie. <laughs> this is the proper answer. <laughs> No, you guys can't. It, the, the actual answer is because you're, you're catching up and I'm cutting out. Right? Okay. So let's talk about EM or absorption. Doesn't matter, right? Versus uh, wavelength, right? And we've got, we've got water. We've got um, uh, 
uh, acetonitrile. We've got hexane. And we've got perfluoro octane. So you okay. see, yes. Uh, the acetonitrile, <clears throat> is that because the um, the CN bond vibration? No. Oh, just because no, it the, seems the, like it, it does a little bit better of dampening, I don't know. Well, so the thing that's changing as we go down this list between water, acetonitrile, hexane, and perfluoride is that we're decreasing the polarity And we're also decreasing the polarizability. So basically, something dissolved in perfluoro octane is almost like it's a gas, right? Because perfluoro octane almost can't solve it. There's just a little bit of a dipole moment at the methyl groups, and that's. And then in addition to that fact, the fluorides are very chemically hard. They're electronically hard, right? There's no way, there's very little that another dipole can do to distort the cloud of electrons around the closed shell. So that reduces the total interaction that perfluoro octane has with things, right? Then if you get it in the gas phase, you see you see a mess like that. Oops. So the, so the one with the four peaks that you have for the fluoro octane, is that one in a liquid state or? Yeah, the perfluoro octane, it is in a liquid state, right? It's just barely solvated. So, so it's more like, it's more like the molecule just sort of being held in solution by very weak forces. So the stronger so like the those yeah. Sorry. So, like the the least interactions, the better. Like uh, charge interacts, and if you can polarize, it's it's like a dipole dipole sort of. Exactly. 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 Yeah. Right. So Heitler, London, and Van der Waals are in. They were. They involve involve induced dipoles, right? So it's hard to induce a dipole in a fluoride or a helium atom, for example, is the least polarizable thing that we have in this universe is a helium atom, you know, or aside from like protons, the charge, right? But, a, you know, a helium atom is the most like a neutral molecule that cannot be polarized. A, a, a carbon fluorine bond is, is very similar, right? Very nonpolar. Yeah, isn't a fluorine like the, the same size as like a hydrogen? Yeah. It's close. It's close. It's a little bit larger, but it's close. Yeah, like and, <laughs> yeah. And if you can imagine a carbon fluorine bond being non-polarizable, right? And having low interactions with other molecules, right? Then describe to me the physical properties of perfluoroethylene. It's carbon, it's CF2, 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 CF2. Oops. CF2, CF2. 
personal athlete. No, there's no there's no ene in athlete. It's just for floral ethic. They call it ethylene for historical reasons, right? So what is another name for perfluoro ethylene? What is the trade name for perfluoro ethylene? You all have it in your house. Oh, is it Teflon? Yes, it is Teflon. What sticks to Teflon? Pretty much nothing, right? Except when you scratch it with a fork, and then it's over. And it's a piece of trash because the eggs always stick where the fork hit. And you got to treat it like it was a stupid stainless steel pan anyways. You got to scrub it. And when you scrub it, more Teflon comes off, and pretty soon it's game over. But the point of all that was simply that Teflon is very low chemical interaction with anything else, right? How they get it to stick to the metal, I don't know. <laughs> they have some trick. Right? But, um, but perfluoral octane, right, can solvate enough to get a few things into dilute solution. Now, a lot of times, a mo molecules will actually aggregate together. It will go up in pairs. Like the, the a pair of molecules called a dimer. Uh, it could be flat face on. It could be canted. It could be end on. You know, a pair of molecules can get into solution, right? And that is where our journey begins into smile. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay, there's examples of excitation emission. So what? There's energy available. You got to do this. Answer those questions. Answer that question. Answer that question. By the way, the answer is a bridge. So um, I'm going to post this when the lecture is done. I'll post these questions. You guys have to write all the answers. You have to return them to me. I'm going to give you 10 points. Maybe I'll give you a point for every question. Maybe five points for some questions. These are going to be graded questions. Right? Oh, this one's going to be fun. You guys are going to choke heavy on this one. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so actually you're not ready to answer this one, but fluorophores, um, like if you have, um, for example, yeah, um, rhodamine 6G in solution, okay? Here, let me go out back to the actual music instance. Uh, no, that's more advertising. Here. There we go. If you look at rhodamine 6G, for example, or rhodamine 3 or whatever, they're all about the same, right? If you look at the solid, it's not the same color as the solution. Right? Because when the fluorophores pack together, they interact. And the interactions can change the wavelength of the excited states. And they can also quench the excited states. They can change the wavelength, change the lifetime, and they can quench. So, if you look at um, uh, rhodamine 6G in the bottle, it looks like almost it's like dark, dark red. It's, it's like if it were a dark room, you might say it's black. You know? It's really dark. Then as soon as it hits water, boom, you've got this brilliant orange. You know? 
And it's like, what happened there? You know, what happened to these molecules? I mean, they went from solid to solvate and liquid. That fluorescence just turned on like crazy, you know? And um, the, the, the fact is that um, uh, the excited states of many fluorophores contain a large dipole. It's not the transition dipole. Sorry about that. Transition dipole is mixes both states somehow. I don't even know how. Weird, you know? But the excited states have a permanent dipole. Yeah, it's permanent as a state, right? But it's a permanent dipole, right? So when two adjoining molecules, let's say they're stacked, they're canted like this, right? Let's say that this end is positive and this end, and the other end is negative, right? Then there's going to be an attractive force there, right? A repulsive force there and a repulsive force there, right? And so when when this molecule is excited, some weird things can happen, right? One is that its energy is immediately affected by the fact that it's near another dipole, not as strong, or it could be the opposite direction. You know? But it's, it's relative to the separated dipoles, its energy is now different, right? And um, then another weird thing can happen called um, uh, Forster or Dexter energy transfer. Puppy dog, puppy dog, in Pauline's picture. Can you guys see Pauline as a puppy dog? Who's back from the back from the the from the surgeon? No, no, no. That that was my other dog. That, that was oh. the hospital. That was my other dog. Okay, I was thinking. I don't think he would be like this if he was just out of surgery <laughs> two days ago. I know, I know, so I'm stupid here. But, 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 um, so just getting back on track here, sorry, for just one second. Um, the, 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 the interaction between these, the, the excited state, right, can actually switch places with an adjoining molecule. Literally, this one will relax to the ground state, and this one will be excited, right? And when that starts happening, then this ex excitation starts moving around in this lattice, right? That's called an exciton. Right? There's two whole libraries of language in talking about this phenomenon. One is called H and J coupling. The other is called exotonic, okay? And we are gonna talk mostly about exotons, okay? Because when you have an array of crystal, it actually works pretty well and it explains everything just fine, right? H and J coupling is, works just as well, they're equivalent. But we're gonna talk about exotons, right? We'll talk about it next time. But um, uh, so you can see that you know the weak fluorescence maybe from the surface of these molecules goes way up when they're when they're solvated. Actually, this is actually um, these are smiles. These are the type. These are molecules that are encapsulated into into a um, a polar heterocycle. It's a um, there's a bunch of cyanides, right? Uh, here, it's a cyano star, okay? Cyano, 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 cyano. And all the rest of this is T-butyl benzene, which is chicken fat, you know? It's gonna keep all these molecules apart, but then it has this really polar cavity, right? Why is it really polar? Because there's one, two, three, four, five, 
cyanides directing the, you know, directing uh, probably the positive end of their dipole in towards the center. Right? And then what happens is that if you have a, a rhodamine perchlorate right, and the cyanostar in solution together, and you crystallize that solution, they co-crystallize. And the, the co-crystals look kind of like this. It's like sandwiches of the uh, rhodamine. This is rhodamine. This is the fluorophore. These are perchlorates. And then these flat, sticky things, the ones drawn with sticks, are the cyanostars. Right? So this is, um, and it separates the rhodamines from each other enough that excitonic coupling is effectively gone. Okay. So this is why, in rare cases, rare cases, and I'm talking rare. It pays big time to be a chemist. <laughs> because these guys, this whole paper is these guys' victory lap because they made a fluorophore that you can condense and still forms. So that means you can make smiles, you can make a powder of smiles and dump it into a polymer, dump it into whatever crappy solvent you've got. And so long as you can disperse them, they're going to light up. They're never going to aggregate. They're never going to lose their fluorescence. They're probably, anyway, well, they'll lose it eventually because they're going to, they're going to photo bleach. Okie doke. Are you guys happy or are you guys depressed? Don't lie. A little, a little, bit, of a little bit of both. A little bit of both. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, channel your depression into working on these problems from the start. And when you get down to the smiles questions here, when you get down to the smiles questions, uh, you can give up when you get to H and J. Right? See if you can do this one. See if you can do this uh, problem seven. Right? There's this is an energy level diagram, and these are. These are for absorbance and fluorescence spectra. Yeah. It's the same shit we did up above. Okay. All right. Read the chapter and I will see you guys all.